In the previous video, we saw the navigation in the 3D view, and now we are going to continue with the overlays and the viewport shading. Remember that, if you are enjoying this series and want to go deeper, I invite you to take a look at my complete Blender course for beginners. You have the link in the video description. Let's start now with the next level. Let's talk now about overlays and viewport shading, which are some visual aids offered by the program. The overlays can be found in this tab here, and they are some elements that are drawn on top of our scene. Here, we have to activate and deactivate the floor grid. To activate and deactivate the axes, we can deactivate the text here in the corner, the 3D cursor, annotations, etc. So when we want to clean up our interface a little bit to have less information, we can use these little buttons here. And we have other options down here. For example, there is the wireframe, which is to visualize the geometry of the model. When we do this, we start to draw all the edges of the polygons. We can also modify the opacity. And here the last important option of this part is the face orientation. When we activate it, the whole object turns blue, and what face orientation does is to show us the direction in which the faces of the polygons are pointing. I'm going to make a little graphic here to explain the normals. This would be a surface of polygons, and the faces would be pointing outward. That is, this would be the outer normal of the polygon. If we are looking from this side, we would be looking at that outer face. That is, in this case, we would be looking at the blue face. But in this area here inside, there is the inner normal. That is, the inner part of the polygon. I'm going to invert one side here to show you. If I press Shift N, I'm going to recalculate the normals, and I'm going to tell it to be inverted. So here in this case, the normal of this polygon is pointing inward. So we're looking at the inside face. But ideally, we should always have all the normals pointing outward. This way, the polygons will render correctly. So, this face orientation option helps us to identify if we have some inverted polygons that we need to correct. Well, I'm going to turn face orientation off here, and those would be the most important options in the overlays. Now, on the other side, we have the viewport shading which are ways to visualize our scene. The first one is the wireframe mode, where we see only the edges of the geometry. The second is the solid mode, where we already see our object with a solid surface. Then we have the material view, where we can already identify qualities of the material. For example, if here the surface of the material has a color, we will be able to see it in this mode. And finally, there is the render mode. Here, we would already be seeing the final quality of the scene, already with all the lighting calculated. So here, for example, if we have a light and we move it, we can see that this light is being rendered. Let's go through some options then, one by one. First, we have the wire mode. And here, the only option that might be useful to us is X-ray. This is for manipulating the visibility of the back of objects. If we turn it down to zero, they're going to be completely visible. Now in solid mode, we have more options. First of all, we have some options for the surface display. We can change this study light to have different material options. We have this other group, which is madcaps, that already have a little bit more advanced material dynamics. And with this, we can visualize our objects with different materials, which can help us to identify some details more clearly. And finally, we have the flat mode, which is a flat color that helps us to perceive the silhouette. Well, I'll leave this as it was. And let's look at these other options. We have the color, where we would see the color of the object, of the attributes. If we have, for example, vertex colors, we can also have a random color for each object. That is, if I have several objects, random colors will be created for each of them. So we can help us to identify each object separately. And down here we have more options. For example, the back face culling. That is to make the inner faces look transparent. If, for example, here I create a plane, here I would have the outer normal and I would see it perfectly. But if I look from below and activate back face culling, I can no longer see it. 
the object is still here, but the inverted normals are transparent. Well, another option we have is x-rays. To see through the objects, it's the same one we have here next to it, we can access it more easily. We also have the shadow, where our objects are going to cast shadows on them and on other objects. And that makes it look a little bit more real. However, it does make the scene a little bit more resource intensive, so it's not ideal to have it on all the time. And we have over here also the cavities. When we turn it on, you can see that the edges and the cavities become more visible. I'm going to turn it off and on so you can see the difference. And so we can see the cavities, we're going to make a little cut and sink it. And you can see it looks a little bit darker. If I turn it off, again, it looks completely flat. Okay, so those are the important options of the solid mode. And here we have now the material mode, where you will directly see the material that we have selected. As I said before, the only options we have here, they are to manipulate a little bit the lights in the background. I can, for example, rotate this 3D environment, which is an image that is helping us to illuminate at this moment and raise or lower the intensity of the lighting. And finally, the final render view, where we no longer have any option, because here, what we are going to see is directly the final scene, with all the details that we have already created. So all the adjustments would already come directly in the lighting, or in the parameters that we have here of the render. And in this section, the only important shortcut we would have would be the Z. With the Z, we can select the viewport shading mode that we want to use. And that's it. So that would be all the important things we have here regarding the overlays and the viewport shading. And in the next video, we are going to see how visibility works and the collections in Blender.